my brothers and sisters in Christ. I've been a priest for almost 24 years, a bishop for over just a year, and a practicing Catholic for almost 60 years. And this is my first Easter Vigil Mass where I'm in a big, beautiful, empty church. Physically, that is. But I know you are in your homes praying with us, with our pastor, Father Diascanis, with Father Larry, with Deacon Ed, with our two seminarians, Chancellor and Paschal. We are all with, we are also without our RCIA candidates who normally would be at this vigil mass tonight to be baptized as adults and enter into full communion with the Catholic Church. We know how disappointed you are not receiving your sacraments tonight, that it has been delayed. We are all celebrating at this Easter Vigil Mass our belief that Jesus Christ is risen from the dead and in so doing, he overcame sin and death forever. This worldwide pandemic has caused profound suffering to untold millions of people. People have lost their jobs and their income. Many thousands around the world and in our own country have suffered terribly telling us it's like the worst flu they've ever had. And many have died without a priest being able to anoint them or to give them viaticum, which is Latin for food for the journey, their last Eucharist. Many have died in hospitals where the people most dear to them their husbands and wives, their children, were not allowed to be with them, to hold their hand, to pray with them as they entered eternal life. I was able to do that with my brothers and sisters, to be with our mother when she took her last breath at a nursing home five years ago. There has also been profound suffering in a spiritual sense with the unprecedented cessation of all public masses around the world. Our churches have been closed. You're not able to receive the sacraments, confession, Holy Eucharist, which is the source and summit of our faith. But we all must remember that our homes are an extension of our parish, a little church where we bring Christ from our encounter with him from the bigger church. Jesus Christ and his church is always present with us. And our last suffering to mention is fear, the fear we all have of not knowing how long this will last and will it affect the ones we love the most, our family members, or even ourselves. With all this suffering we are experiencing with COVID-19, we get a little glimpse of what the apostles were going through on Good Friday. They were all so afraid, they fled in fear all but John, who stood at the cross with his mother Mary, and even Peter denied Jesus three times. And then Jesus rose from the dead, and that changed everything. Overjoyed, the apostles spent the rest of their lives telling the good news. And we believe that good news, and that's why we're Catholic which means universal. We belong to the church. 
We are the body of Christ. Our faith teaches us that God does not will evil or suffering, but he allows it. And he always brings good from it. The great Saint Philip Neri, our parish patron, said, All of God's purposes are to the good, although we may not always understand. This we can trust in it. How many times in the last few years have we all thought our lives have gotten way too crazy? So many distractions, so many competing interests for our limited time, so many practices and sporting events, meetings and events, not enough time with our family. Well, in the last month, everything has been canceled or postponed indefinitely. In the last few weeks, families have rediscovered themselves. They now have time to be with each other, to do things together as a family. We see them walking around the neighborhood together, riding bikes together. They're doing puzzles, reading books, playing cards watching movies together. And best of all, you're talking to each other and praying together. We now have so many good Catholic resources on TV and on the computer. I know families are praying the rosary together. A bunch of men prayed the rosary this morning from the rectory with Zoom. That was a beautiful thing. And as a family, you're making a spiritual communion right now to be with us in this church with our Lord. It's a fair question and has been for thousands of years. Why does God allow evil? Why does he allow suffering, especially for innocent people? And why is he allowing this great pandemic pandemic of 2020? Perhaps we need to consider what changes need to be made as a society, how we're treating others, especially from the very first moments of conception until the last moments of death. And this time of social destiny is terrible. I live just a short ride away from my family in Philadelphia. And I would love to visit them and hug them like I always do when I return from home. And I can't do that. And you can't visit your relatives. But now I have a new family in our rectory right here. And we have been praying together, morning prayer and evening prayer, Every morning we say Mass in our chapel in the rectory for all of your intentions. Thanks to many generous parishioners, we are eating very well. And we are grateful for those delicious meals. We have wonderful meals together. We laugh and tell jokes. We tell stories from when we were growing up. And we talk about what the seminarians are learning at the seminary in their now online classes. They ask us, the old guys, questions. And we ask them about what their interests are. And believe me, they keep us on our toes with those theologically tough questions. They're pretty smart. So I now live with four really interesting men who really love the Lord. And they are making me a better man and hopefully a better bishop. And I thank you, men. And I can only imagine how much closer you are all becoming with your families now that you are all together 24-7. And I don't want anyone to quote Nietzsche to me who said, that which does not kill me makes me stronger. 
Is it hard sometimes? Of course it is. But we must not waste this time. We cannot waste this opportunity that none of us asked for or expected. And God willing, it may never happen again. Or at least not for another hundred years. Or better yet, a thousand years. We have to meditate and think about and pray about how can we grow in our faith? How can we love our risen Lord even more? So that when the time does pass and we resume to some extent our former lives, how can we keep the good and learn from it? All the good things we've had, we've had as a family, how do we hold on to that? And that could be one of the good things that comes from this time of great suffering. And that will only be one of the many good things that can come from this. Jesus is risen. Hallelujah.